So I want to dig a little bit deeper into the two uh, announcements in the branch. And I want to call uh, Abi to talk about our new platform, ENCS. Thank you, uh, thank you, Liad, uh, for the introduction of the enterprise NFE solution. Uh, I'm going to spend the next five minutes talking about the hardware. Uh, my name is Abhi Karmakar. I'm a product manager at Cisco. I work in the enterprise routing group, and I work closely with the enterprise NFE, and we work together on this solution. So uh, very pleased to introduce this new platform, the ENCS 5400. We introduced this yesterday at the keynote, uh, and again, the orders, everything is ready. It's all happening starting today. Now, ENCS is a hosting platform for network services, built specifically for enterprise NFE. This is, again, coming from the routing group. It's the same product team, the same engineering team that builds the ISR, and we also build branch servers. So the same team thought of this concept. We took the best attributes out of a routing platform, a networking platform. We took the best attributes out of a server, and we put it together in this hybrid platform that we believe will be very useful for, 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 for branch networks. Now, uh, talking about some of the key features, of course, is a hosting platform. So number one was the processor. So we use the latest and greatest Intel processors from Xeon, uh, the Broadville family. There are three options uh, to choose from. It, it's a six-core processor, an eight-core processor, or a 12-core processor. Now, just like any other server, a key feature that's typically relegated to high-end servers is the ability to do lights-out management, which is basically managing the device even if the main processor is completely down. So sitting miles away, you could actually go and change the BIOS settings, get a virtual KVM, virtual VGA, send keystrokes, uh, mount some storage, install the OS from scratch. You could do all of that with the lights out management. And we'll talk more about the networking features on the next slide. So again, just adding a little bit more detail. Now, in terms of memory, the base, system memory is 16 GB, and you can extend it out to 64 GB. Again, plenty for branch environments, for one or two VNFs. This can scale up to five, six, again, depending on the exact workloads. In terms of storage, you have two options. So there is some storage on the motherboard itself. That scales up to 400 GB. But then if you have applications that require caching, or if you have applications that, like physical security applications that want to store a camera feed for a longer duration, we have these two external drives on the system that are externally accessible. Again, these are the same drives that are used on our larger platforms. So with these external drives, we can scale up to four terabytes more. So again, plenty of storage for small uh, branch deployments. And then we have a VGA port if you wanted to connect a monitor, a USB port for connecting a keyboard. But again, most of the time, you'll configure it over the network. You'll connect it over TCP. Let's talk about some of the networking features. We actually have a built-in switch. It's built into the platform all the way towards the left. It's eight ports, and it also supports power over Ethernet. So if you have a branch office with some access points, you can actually connect those access points directly into this box and just power it up from there. Or IP phones, for instance. They could all be directly powered through this. We have a couple of Gigi ports on the system. These are RJ45 and SFP capable. They can operate in active standby mode. A couple of management ports to manage the main CPU as well as to manage the lights out management hardware. So all of those ports are available. Now, another key differentiator, saving the best for the last, is this network interface module, what we call the network interface module. This is the same slot that's available on our routers as well. This is the slot that would allow a customer to customize this device with a specific kind of a WAN interface. So if you needed cellular connectivity, if you needed T1 connectivity, 
customers in Europe, service providers in Europe, rely a lot on DSL connectivity. So the same platform, which is a server, which is a switch, which is a router, can actually also use those WAN technologies. We build 15 different kinds of uh, NIMS, all the way from WAN to voice. If you wanted more switch ports, we actually make a module, and you can extend your switch out to up to 16 ports. Again, a key, key differentiator. Another feature we have is hardware acceleration for all the virtual machines. Now, typically, uh, on a server platform, when the virtual machines are talking to each other, they use software switching, which means it uses up the main CPU. On this platform, we have the ability to actually take that down into hardware. So when VNFA is talking to VNFB, that traffic is switched through hardware. And then later down the line, uh, on our roadmap, we actually have a dedicated crypto module. So if you're doing, um, let's say, a gig of IPsec for VPN connectivity to a central site, that can also be offloaded to this hardware, uh, separate hardware module. Again, saving you precious CPU cycles to host your applications. Just a quick question. The different uh, RAM, DRAM, and uh, processing options, is this always the same hardware, only limited by software, so licensing, or do we have different hardware models? So we actually have three different hardware chassis, and the processor is soldered in. RAM is configurable. So when you start with a specific chassis, you can select how much RAM uh, you require. And the base configuration includes 16 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage on the motherboard. Is this thing one integrated system in the way that I manage it? Or is the network something that a network ops team deals with and the compute something that a different team deals with? Uh, so this is one system. It's, it's closer to the first. On this system, Leah talked about our network operating system that we call NFEIS. So think of that as a network hypervisor that runs natively bare metal on the hardware. That's the main operating system. Uh, again, it's Linux-based. It has the KVM hypervisor. It has OVS as the virtual switch. But that layer also is responsible for the lifecycle management of the VNFs. It exposes APIs. It has a built-in web GUI for someone to manage the system. Uh, of course, we have centralized management tools to manage the entire device. But just to add to that, actually, that's a very good question. Lights out management, which is again part of this device, can also work if the main operating system is completely down or not reachable. So there is, so think of this as getting in to the system out of band. Now for most purposes, after you stage it, you will never need to use it but that's there as a fail-safe way of getting into the box. And SimC also has APIs, CLI, a local GUI. Yes, and uh, NFEIS has uh, role-based access control. So depending uh, on the level of privilege for your administrator, you could give them complete access or read-only access or something in between. And those roles will evolve. Over. If I'm used to NXOS or iOS, is it, am I going to be comfortable in NFEIS? Yes. So we have taken a lot of effort to make sure the look and feel of NFEIS, at least in the CLI, is very similar to iOS. Although, you know, we are moving towards uh, API first. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. You really intend people to manage this thing CLI or not? And it sounds like you, you really want to start moving people towards API. We'd like to move start moving people towards APIs. So this platform has, NFEIS has REST APIs and NetConf APIs. But for our customers that have built-in scripts, they are used to operating the systems in a certain way, they can always use the CLI. Um, again, this is Enterprise Network Compute System. So it's a compute system for the network operator. Now, with the addition of ENCS, we actually now give a variety of options for the hosting platform. For those customers that are, have more centralized services or cloud services, or they don't see the need to have that flexibility of services at the branch as an on-demand function, 
our ISR lineup with ISR 4K is a great solution for them. For those customers that want to start moving and start their journey with virtualization, they can actually, as I mentioned, put a UCSE blade into the 4K. In this case, they would keep the router physical, but have other services virtualized. For those customers that want full flexibility, including a virtual router, they can go either with ENCS or with a, still a UCSC server, which if they have really high capacity from a core memory or storage requirement perspective. Now, you may ask, what are the benefits of a virtual router, right? So one example that I, I, I always tell, tell customers is that if today you have a 10 meg branch and you know what's the performance and the features, you would buy a router that fits that requirements. Later on, you update to 100, maybe to a gig. You enable more features, more encryption, more processing. You may need to upgrade to a bigger router. When you have a virtual router, you don't need to do that. You can just add more resources, more CPU, more memory, and get that expanded and elastic capacity. So you get full elasticity when you have everything virtualized, including the router, and that's what this new platform ENCS can provide. I have a question on the virtual router part. Yes. Because this box has physical switch ports and physical uplink ports, and now you're talking about the virtual router. How does that fit together? Who's controlling the physical switching hardware? Yes, so what we have done, as I mentioned, we have the, the software NFVIS, this is our software, and we have our virtual router based on iOS called ISRV. So we've implemented functionalities both in that software and in the ISRV to give access to the virtual router to these physical elements. One example is this, uh, the, the NIM slot, right? An ADSL or, or 4G LTE. So that virtual router can actually uh, get access to it and it's gonna be uh, pop up as a standard interface the same as you have on a physical router. It can only be done with our virtual router. That's the only current VNF that has access. Uh, a standard or a third party VNF won't have access to these uh, enhanced uh, hardware. You are doing something like PCI bypass on the hypervisor site and connect this hardware straight to the VM. Yes, we do that for the hardware acceleration using SRIOV, exactly. Thank you. Now, the last thing here, for those customers that are not sure which platform they want to start, if they go with Cisco One, this is our software offering, monetization offer, they can start with a physical router and maybe a UCSC and later on get move to ENCS, but they can actually just port that license from the physical router to the virtual router. They don't need to buy the router license again. So they just buy the hardware and they get the software license of the routing function ported from the physical router to the virtual router. So does that mean that I can swap my Cisco 4000 license for a CSR license? Correct. If you purchase the 4K originally through Cisco One. So if you're a customer today is really looking to purchase a physical router, go with Cisco One to have that opportunity to transition later on to a virtual router. Yes.